everybody and welcome back. I'm Maple Van Girl. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is a beautiful day and the filming for episode 6, which I started filming on Good Friday, is just going all wonky. I wanted to film a video where I was taking off the decals um, that are on my van and it's just taking forever and so I'm gonna figure something out with that video and we'll do something with that. However, since today is a beautiful day and the decals are taking forever, instead of doing that video, we are going to do a video that probably a lot of people have been waiting for, which is the pre-mod van tour. I'm going to take you inside Lola and you're going to get to see uh, what she looks like on the outside and the inside before I start building into her. So let's go do that. Alright, let's do a van tour. There she is. All right, let's do the driver's side first. So that's my driver's side. That's where my feet are gonna be for the next little while. Uh, up here you have Ganesh, the Hindu god of wealth and wisdom, hanging from the rear view because Goodness knows, we can all use a little bit of wealth and wisdom in our lives. Alright, let's go around the side. These are the, well, this is what's left of the decals, which you will, at some future point, see me removing in a video. That's about all that's left on this side, too. Alright, side door. Alright, in we go. So this is the space that I'm going to be modifying and uh, hopefully we'll have you guys along for most of that. And uh, yeah, you can see it's got rubber flooring. Uh, the lights are currently off the ceiling and on the floor at the moment because my wonderful neighbor helped me to remove the ceiling yesterday as well as the wooden floor that was already in here. And we found that this is a nice rubber floor underneath. It's already got insulation under it. You can kind of, this is where we took out the air conditioning unit yesterday. And you can see that it's already got a layer of insulation underneath the rubber flooring. So I think to save money and to be practical, we will just leave this floor in for now because it's fairly easy to sweep off. It's fairly easy to clean. And we've got to insulate the walls, the ceiling, and back here is where we're going to build our bed. Have nice little bedroom windows. And this here is where the kitchen is going to go, and some storage possibly. And then over here we'll have a little bit more storage near the wheel well. So let's hop up the back here. kind of get the full effect. And that's Lola. That is your van tour of the space that I'm going to be living in for a little bit. Hope you all enjoyed. Okay, so because I want my channel to have some stuff on it that's a little different and maybe not entirely related to van lifing, just to make things interesting, uh, today we are going to be cleaning our replica brown best musket and I'm going to show you what you need to do that. So you're going to need boiling water, a bucket, you're going to need a screwdriver and a thing to release your flint which um, is a nail finisher that's been kind of cut down to allow me to do that because my lock is particularly small. Uh, you need some sort of cotton bits and use that to dry the inside of your barrel, a cloth, you need white lithium grease, some gun oil, your rod comes in three parts. You're going to use that to clean the barrel. You need a clamp for the mainspring. These are the attachments. You need a cork, funnel, Q-tip, and nail clippers or scissors. So let's uh, get started on this and we'll show you how this all comes together. So this is Baby, named after the gun in Hellboy because I'm a nerd. And as you can see, 
she is filthy from Garrison Day. We were firing demo shots for the public. And the first thing you're going to want to do before you start cleaning is see if I can do this one handed because I'm filming at the same time. All right, we're going to have to we do this with the right hand. So, the first thing you want to do is to put the gun at half cock. And that probably looked terrible on film, but it's at half cock now because that's your safety position. And you're going to want to take your flint out. So, let's do that. So this is where you take whatever tool you're using to loosen up your the grips for your flint and you just get that loose enough that you can take it off with your hands. And the reason you don't use a screwdriver is you can bend this bit so it's better to use something that goes in the hole and then that can uh, you can remove your flint without damaging anything. So let's get that out and we'll toss that in the bucket with some boiling water. Alright, now that we've got the camera on close-up mode, hopefully this will film a bit better. So, yeah, yeah, you can probably see that a lot better now, how filthy she is. So, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna get your cloth and you're gonna sorta put it over this part here. And the reason you do that is because you don't want teeth marks on your metal of your gun because then it looks unappealing. And again, trying to do this one-handed because I'm filming. Apologies. Probably look like I've never done this before in my life. So you're going to want to clamp this. Okay, yeah, I can't do this one-handed, so give me a second. Okay, so you see we got the clamps on there and that's to remove the tension from this part here so that you can remove your flash guard. That's this thing here. They wouldn't have had this on the gun in 1812. We put it on so that we don't uh, burn the faces of the people next to us in the line. It's kind of a safety requirement for reenactors. So you remove your flash guard and your frizzin, which is this part here. That's the part that makes the sparks. We'll take those off and we'll throw them in the bucket along with the flint and the top part of this. You can probably see a bit better now all the black powder that's on there and the reason that we want to clean that off is because gunpowder is corrosive and it'll damage the metal of your gun and cause metal fatigue which can be dangerous because when you go to fire a shot your gun can go explodey and you don't want that to happen because it's very bad. So this part's going to take a bit of doing. I'm going to have to knock that off because it's really, this, this part in here, it's, it's really on here really, really good. So I'm going to go grab uh, another tool. We're going to knock that off, throw it in the bucket, and then I will show you some more. All right, so we've got that off now. That's the hammer. And uh, what you can see here is this is the lock of the gun. You can release the clamps now. off. And uh, you ever hear the phrase lock, stock, and barrel? Well, that's your lock. That's your stock. And this is your barrel. There. That great mystery of the phrase is now explained. You can thank me for that. So, as you can see, you got all that sloshing around in there and boiling water. You got all the bits from the lock that are in there. And now, this is where the q-tip comes in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find some nail clippers and see if you can get this on the camera. I really need to have somebody help me film stuff like this. You're basically gonna break the q-tip We're gonna do is we're gonna trim the Q-tip end, not the fuzzy end, the cardboard end. Trim that into a point, and the reason that you do this is because you want to plug your touch hole, and I'll explain what that is in a second. 
All right. So you can see there, kind of done that to a point. And what you're gonna do now is that little hole there is your touch hole. That's where you can see in the pan, that's where you put, oh, let's turn it there. The pan here is where you put your powder. And um, when the flint sparks, the sparks hit the powder in the pan, ignite it, and it goes through the touch hole into the charge in your barrel. And you want to plug that because when you put boiling water down the end of the barrel, you don't want that coming out that hole and burning your legs. So let's get that all ready and we'll go to the next step. So in order to get at the touch hole and put your Q-tip in, you need to remove the lock entirely. And to do that, you sort of, you can see the lock is on this side. What you do is you flip it over and I have a pattern of doing this, not just because I have OCD, but because it helps me to remember which is which, because it's important. One of these screws is a different length than the other, so you want to remember which one's the left. So I always have the gun pointed the same direction when I disassemble everything, and I put one screw in my left pocket, that's the left screw, and then I put the right screw in my right pocket, and then I always know which screw goes where. So just going to hold this over the stool here so that when the lock comes off it'll fall on the stool and not on the ground. That way we won't mark up my mum's lovely patio. Oh, well it stayed in place anyway. Alright, so that screw goes in the right pocket. I apologize if I'm making you dizzy filming this like a monkey with a hangover because again, doing it by myself. And our gorilla pod has not yet arrived in the mail. So there you go. That is your lock. And what you can see is on the inside, that is your mainspring. That's what makes everything work. I'm gonna toss that in the barrel. What barrel? Bucket. It was a B word, whatever. Anyway, so you toss that in the bucket with your boiling water to get the powder off. And now, you can see, now that the lock isn't in the way, we can plug the touch hole and get to clean in the barrel. Okay, now before you can dump the boiling water down, you want to get any loose powder that's down the barrel out, and that's why you use your copper brush attachment on your cleany pole, whatever it's called. So you're gonna jam that down your barrel, kind of like get any of the loose powder out, pull her out. I don't know if you guys saw the poof of powder. It's pretty... I didn't fire that many shots, so it shouldn't be too bad down there. Try to keep it on and you'll see the powder come out. Poof! Like that. So you loosened it up. And now you're gonna tilt the barrel down, give her a kick let any of that out. And then I uh, do that a few times. And once you've done that a few times, we can put some boiling water down the barrel and uh, get the rest of that powder out. Alright, so here's where we give a safety tip. A couple of safety tips actually, so you don't burn the ever loving out of yourself. You are going to hold your gun by the strap, because if you pour boiling water down the barrel and you hold it by the barrel, you're gonna burn yourself. And there's a cork I'm holding that there. So, pour this down the barrel and you do it slowly. This is another safety tip. Do it very slowly because if you don't, it's going to come scooshing out the end and you're going to burn yourself. So let's do it nice and slow. And you're just going to pour a little bit in there. And you take your funnel out. And get a cork. Sorry, we had a malfunction there. We dropped our camera. So once you've scooshed it back and forth, you remove the cork and then you dump the water out of the barrel. So let's uh, see if we can get that on film for you. There you go. You can see the water's tinted black from the powder. I mean, it's not too bad because, like I said, I didn't fire that many shots. So let's do that a few more times and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so the next attachment you're going to need on your pole is this one. I 
reason for that is once the water's come out clear out the end of your barrel, then that means you've pretty much gotten away all the yucky caked stuff. And you're gonna thread, let's do it through this side. You're gonna thread a little patch through the eye. So like a sewing needle, and then you're gonna pull it through about halfway. Oh, I can't wait until my gorilla pod arrives and I don't have to film it like this. If commenters indicate that they would like to see this again filmed in a manner that is not like a monkey with a hangover, then I will film the cleaning process again on another day. So you got that, kind of got that nice ball at the end. And then you're going to stick that down your barrel because you don't want to leave water in there because then it'll rust and rust is not the friend of a gun or a reenactor. And what this does is you're going to dry the water away from the inside of the barrel. You can see there it's come away all black and moist. So you're going to toss that and we're going to do that a bunch more times until the patch comes away sort of dry. Okay, for the next step you are going to need the attachment for your rod that looks like a shako plume. If you're a reenactor you know what that means. Uh, if you're not a reenactor, the one that looks like a big fuzzy caterpillar. Then you need your white lithium grease. And you are going to spray it just a little bit. Sorry, trying to watch the viewfinder and make sure this is on camera here. And hopefully you have better aim than that. Because you want to spray a little bit down the barrel, not on the barrel. I'm just going like, to mop that up a bit. I'll clean that up later. And then you're going to put your fluffy down the barrel. And that just helps to kind of protect the inside. And that'll all burn away the first shot you fire afterwards. But now that that's done, let's go to the next step. So, as I mentioned before, if you are a reenactor or a musket, rust is not your friend. So before you reassemble everything, what you want to do is you want to get a very kind of gentle uh, grade of steel wool, the kind that's rated for polishing. And you want to just try to sand away, sort of polish away some of that surface rust. Um, magic eraser also with some light um, sort of solution. I don't know what this cleaning solution is made of for this, but uh, you could probably find, out, find it online. Um, my friend Mac has a really cool recipe that he cooked up and it works really well. But uh, for now, since I don't have Max Magic Mist, Max Magic Musket Mist, I will uh, continue to use my steel wool. And you want to kind of get away some of the surface rust before you oil the barrel with the gun oil that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to do that and uh, I will bring you back for a reassembly once we have uh, sort of dumped the water out of the bucket and dried all these pieces off. So we will come back for that part. Okay, so we got these all out on our dishcloth. Uh, remember, when these come out of the bucket, they've been in boiling water for a while, so they're going to be really, really, really hot. So don't burn yourself when you take them out. And uh, we're going to use a hair dryer to kind of dry in the little cracks and crevices and holes because they're a bit hard to get into with the dish dryer. I always like to joke that one of the ways you know I'm not a girly girl is I use my hair dryer to do this more than I use it on my actual hair. <laughs> so let's get this done. All right, so now that's all dry. Still hot from the hair dryer, so ouch. <laughs> all right, pop that back on there. And we're gonna, we're gonna flip her over. And then this is why you carefully remember which screw goes in which hole. 
tighten these. And that'll keep your lock in place. lock is back on the gun. Next thing I'm going to want to do is put the hammer back on. And then pop the screw back in there. getting the frizzin and your flash guard back on are really finicky so I'm not going to be able to film that part however I will show you the assembly when it's all done. Alright so lock is reassembled back to a part where we can film. Remember always handle flints with care because this edge is extremely sharp and uh, flint wounds are not fun. You will bleed a lot. So we're just going to Tighten that up so the flint is securely in place. Yeah, so you now know how to clean a lovely brown bess. Mine is the Sea Service. You can see it's got the wider trigger guard because sailors in the Navy, they wore gloves. So they had to be able to keep have their gloves on and still be able to get their finger into the trigger guard. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that was interesting for you. <laughs>